gracious and loving Father, Lord, we thank you because each moment we gather before thee, it is with joy that your spirit teaches us your word. We ask, Lord, again that your Holy Spirit will teach us this moment. Let your word gain entrance into our hearts. And Father, let the word, O Lord, quicken our understanding of you and help us, Lord, to serve you better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to be looking at the subject titled The Syrophoenician Women. And our text is taken from Nac chapter 7, verses 25, you know, through 30. We're not going to be reading it, but you can take your time, you know, to read that yourself. Praise God. Now, in Mark chapter 7, verse 24, the Bible says that Jesus wanted to take a rest, but he couldn't. He hid. He hid himself. But despite his hiding himself, the multitudes were able to discover where he was hiding. And so they resorted to him. Now, in this particular episode that we're considering, this Syrophoenician woman was one of those that discovered the hiding place of Jesus. Jesus didn't successfully, you know, hide himself from this particular, from this particular, from a number of people, you know, including this woman. She knew where Jesus was hiding, and so she resorted to Jesus to solve, you know, a particular problem. Amen. Now, there was an issue that was troubling this woman, and this woman decided that as long as this issue was bothering her, she also is going to bother Jesus, you know, with a problem until this particular challenge, you know, is taken off her life. Amen. And the problem was that there was a spirit that was tormenting her daughter. And by tormenting her daughter simply implying that the spirit did not allow the daughter to have rest, whether physically, emotionally, or spiritually. There was no rest. She was perturbed. She was disturbed. And so this woman said, Jesus, until you solve this problem, I'm not going to give you any rest too. Amen. Praise God. Now, the scripture asserts further that this woman, you know, came to Jesus because she heard about Jesus. She must have either she directly heard from Jesus or she heard people talk about Jesus. She must have heard testimonies about Jesus healing people, Jesus casting out devils, you know, and Jesus opening the eyes of the blind, the mouth of the dumb, and the ears of the deaf. And what she heard triggered off faith in her. She, a faith, you know, faith arose within her that if she's able to meet with Jesus, that Jesus would be able to cast out this devil, you know, out of her daughter. Amen. The Bible says that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What she heard engineered faith in her. Faith to receive from Jesus, you know, the solution to her problem. Amen. The scripture went further to describe, you know, this woman. The woman was not a Jew. And Jesus actually came for the Jew. Amen. So we can say that Jesus didn't come for this woman. The scripture, this scripture affirms that this woman was a Greek and from a Syrophoenician woman. A, sorry, a Syrophoenician nation. And I believe that for, 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 the, for the identity of this woman to have been given, God wants believers to learn something from this. Now, if you look in those days, this woman would have been considered an unbeliever, while the Jews would have been considered as believers. They had faith, you know, in God. But despite the fact that this woman was a Greek, she was, she was a Gentile, she wasn't a Jew, through an exercise of faith in Jesus Christ, she was able to receive something from God. She was able to receive the miracle from God. While the Jews didn't receive anything from God. And the lesson here is that as a believer, if you do not have faith in God, you won't receive anything from God. While the unbelievers who exercise faith in God on a particular subject will receive a miracle or a healing or a deliverance from God. This is very important. Yes, God makes a distinction between the Jews and the Greek, between the believers and the unbelievers. But if the unbelievers exercise faith to receive something from God, they will receive faith from God. Why the, why the believer who refuses to exercise faith for that particular thing will not receive, you know, the thing from God. This is a major lesson, you know, we need to learn from this story. Praise God. Now, when this woman got to Jesus, she presented her request to Jesus. 
And the request was that Jesus should cast out the devil, you know, or the spirit in her daughter. Now, her request was specific because she knew what the problem was. If she didn't know what the problem was, she would have been rumbling. You know, she would have been asking for all sorts of things, not knowing exactly what the challenge is. And the key lesson from this is that you must know what the challenge is. Because when you know what the challenge is, that you can, then you can place a specific demand on God. That God, I want you to solve this specific problem. Amen. And it's, sometimes, of course, I agree that sometimes you do not know what is what the specific problem is, but the Holy Spirit can receive that. He can, re can reveal that to you. And the more specific you are in terms of identifying the problem, the easier it is for you, you know, to make the specific request and to receive answers to that. Amen. Now, when this woman made her request, Jesus used, you know, an unpleasant language to address her. Praise God. He said unto her, it is not me to take the children's bread to give to the dogs. In other words, Jesus was saying that the Jews were the children of God, while the Greeks and the Gentiles were dogs. It's like you're saying today that the believers are the children of God and the unbelievers are dogs. Now, ordinarily, this should have infuriated the woman, but she wasn't infuriated. Her focus was not on, was not on the language that Jesus used on her. A focus was on the miracle that she needed from Jesus. And to her, it didn't matter whatever Jesus called her. The most important thing is that at the end of the day, her request is granted unto her and that she receives that miracle. When you need a thing from God, you need a miracle from God. Irrespective of the kind of language that anyone uses on you, the most important thing is that you focus on the miracle that you need from God. And don't allow anything to dissuade you, you know, from having uh, that miracle. Praise God. Now, on the strength of, a, of course, after Jesus used that language on her, she, and she gave an intelligent response or she responded intelligently, you know, to Jesus. She said, yes, it is true that it is not right to give the children's bread to the dog, but it is also correct that the dogs do feed on the crumbs that fall from the table. In other words, I don't mind you calling me a dog but crumbs also fall from the table. And as a dog, I can eat those crumbs. And those crumbs are enough to feed me, to satisfy me. And on the basis, on the strength of a persuasive argument, Jesus granted, you know, her request. Her daughter was restored. In fact, by the time she got home, she discovered that her daughter had been healed and that the devil had been cast out. Amen. Now, we summarize this teaching by saying the following. You need to have faith in God to be able to receive from God. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. You need to be persistent in your request. And your request has to be specific. It can only be specific when you have identified, you've taken time to identify the specific challenge, you know, that you are facing. And then you bring that specific request to God addressing the challenge. And it doesn't matter the oppositions that might come your way, whether in terms of what people say, people trying to frustrate you, people trying to discourage you, you know, from receiving that miracle, if you're focused, God will grant you your request. Glory to God. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh Lord, that you will help us to identify the specific challenges that we have. And on the basis of these challenges, we'll go, come to you and present our specific request before you. We ask, Lord, that you will help us, oh God, that no matter the obstacle that is placed upon our ways, Lord, that our focus will be on receiving the answer to our request from you. And we trust you, Lord, to grant the needed miracle. In Jesus' name, 